Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And here I am coming at you on the, the morning of the 9th of April, 2024, surrounded by all these lovely coconuts, actually right by the beach, but at the moment, the sun is just so intense right now that I thought I have to stand in the shade, otherwise it's gonna to be too much for me, man. Right, so yes, I am here, of course, in this most un-Scottish of environments you could possibly imagine. I mean, you know, apart from the coconut trees and apart from it being warm, there's this, uh, there's this yellow fireball in the sky. And I don't know, for personally, I think if the Scots saw the yellow fireball in the sky, they, I don't know, they'd probably think it was a nuclear war or something, wouldn't they? They'd probably never seen it before, you know, that's the thing. And if they stood in it for more than three seconds, they'd turn lobster red and probably die of radiation sickness. But you see, those types of Scots, I can probably get away with taking the piss out of because they're not on the protected group because they're white. Yes, sorry, but I couldn't resist a second video taking the piss out of Humza Useless, as you can imagine there now. It's been, as I speak right now, just over a week since that um, hate crime act came in right and um scotland has been overwhelmed the police there have been overwhelmed with is it over eight thousand complaints and i think half of them if not well at least a third of them are against humza useless himself for his racist anti-white speech and they haven't followed that up right a lot of them have been for jk rowling as well and um yeah they haven't followed that up either but i found out something pretty disturbing today and that was that someone decided to post a picture of a star of david with a, a swastika embedded into it Right. Someone complained about it online to say that they were offended by it and then Police Scotland said that they wouldn't follow it up because the complainant was not Jewish. I mean, fuck's sake, so they're not, they're not really, in, they're not implementing this law properly. Also, Celtic and Rangers been going back and forth with their, uh, we call it their chants, their sectarian chants and uh, God knows how many um, complaints are going to be there and the police apparently um, have to investigate every single one of these complaints. And um, police union bosses now are complaining that this law is getting in the way of tackling real crime. It's only been a week, just over a week, and already police union bosses are complaining that this law is getting in the way of tackling crime. So there you go. But so you know what? I just thought that, because um, I, I heard recently that Scotland or the Scotland Tourist Board or some government office, right, had decided to spend over 100,000, but not quite 200,000 pounds, but somewhere in the six figure range on getting together a sign or a slogan that just said, welcome to Scotland. Well, you know what? I redesigned that sign for free. So have a butcher's at this, yeah, that's right. Welcome to Scotland, come for a week, offend someone, stay for seven years, and you see the hate monster there in the corner there, right down there, bottom seething away, yeah. Well, I was thinking, the hate monster looks like a novelty condom, doesn't it? You know, and what you could do with the hate monster is maybe that, you know, there's all these there's centres that you can go to all around Scotland where you can complain about hate incidents, right, to people. Uh, and they will then log the, the, to the police, right? So you've got these grassing, dobbing in centres that exist, right? And one of them is a sex shop in, in Glasgow. And I was thinking, what a great idea it would be if they decided to start selling novelty hate monster themed condoms. I thought that'd be brilliant, you know, because then it could, you know, for couples who've just had a domestic or something, you know, where he goes, I hate yous, you bitch. And she goes, I hate yous, but you are bastard. And then they, then they have some algae father afterwards with a hate monster condom. I think that'd be very appropriate, don't you? <laughs> so why not, you know, might as well uh, do that. But yeah, so, I think it's really good that in such a short amount of time, this law has demonstrated itself to be unenforceable and unpopular pretty much by everyone, right? And the only people that are using this law are, there's two types pretty much. Those who want to, to get revenge attacks on people because they don't like them, right, for instance, and those others who are just um, overwhelming the system with unnecessary complaints just for the hell of it, just to um, make it so that the police um, are so deluged, you know, sunk in the quicksand of these complaints. But you know what this means, don't you? It means a narco tyranny, because the police won't have the resources nor the time to police real crime. So, you know, it's all right to do hateful actions as long as you, <clears throat> as long as you keep your mouth shut, I suppose, like burglary, robbery, uh, what was it? 
rape and murder, violence and all that sort of stuff. And um, you could just have free reign in Scotland now, I suppose, really. But, you know, as long as you, as long as you don't say hunt your ones, you know, because that's, uh, that's the way it's going there now, you know. Sorry, I have to keep on taking the piss, but you know how it is, you know. I'm a, a plastic paddy, which kind of means that I'm directly related to the Scots, so I can have a bit of banter with them. Also, you know, this uh, English-Scottish thing, taking the piss, goes back and forth. You'll never remove that from the working classes. We'll just have to do that to each other in prison, I suppose, one day, won't we? You know, that's what it comes down to. So, yeah, this is the thing. And Hums are useless. The more I look into him, the more I realise he really is the ultimate cacistocrat. I mean, and how the hell he got to that position? Apparently he was appointed, he was not elected, right? Which kind of means that, uh, wasn't he transport minister? And roads got worse, he was health minister, and the NHS waiting list up in Scotland got worse, and the queues got longer, and the hospitals went worse, and then he was justice minister, and crime went up. So they, they just sort of uh, demoted him upwards, really, didn't they? Until he finally became first minister, and now he's just completely trashing Scotland entirely. Now, I think that this is the only thing that people can do, resistance to this, you know, just um, exhaust the resources of this act now that it has come into law and just make it look like a, an unenforceable joke because that's the only thing you can do. And if they do that in Scotland um, and they succeed in um, bringing Scotland, it's what I like to think of as its poll tax moment. In other words, the poll tax was so unpopular in the UK. Right. And then they started it in Scotland, that was a test bed, right? And then of course, the year later, they brought it to England and Wales and Northern Ireland, I believe too. But it was so unpopular. You remember the infamous, infamous poll tax riot? And um, there was that uh, time where I think um, someone was trampled by a police horse. They survived, believe it or not. They actually survived, yeah? Someone was trampled by a police horse during a poll tax riot and it was so bad that the Tories just had to capitulate and they had to get rid of it. You know, it was Maggie Thatcher's worst political manoeuvre of all. And she was gone shortly after that, you know, so that says something. And I think this is Scotland's poll tax moment. I'm absolutely convinced of it, you know. So here I am in the Philippines, and so I would advise Scottish people who are easily offended to please don't watch this video, you know. I've asked you nicely, don't watch this video because um, if you're the sort of person who's going to be offended, well, you know, I mean, I don't know. You know, I've heard things. I heard some things. Now, I know, I know a lot of people who um, probably don't like Katie Hopkins. But, um, I don't know. She's sort of grown on me a little bit over the years. She's not my favourite person, but at the same time, I still like to um, watch, you know, just because I like a lot of differing opinions. I like to have diversity of opinion. And Katie Hopkins said that she was in Australia once and she referred to the Scots as sweaty socks, which is just Cockney rhyming slang for jock. And it's a friendly term of endearment that Sassanac, see you next Tuesdays like me, um, called the Scottish. And while well, they were often refer to themselves as that, it's often been quite common for Scottish people to have the nickname jock, right? And um, it's not racist, for God's sake, I mean, really. So sweaty sock is like apples and pears. Right, for stairs or, you know, that sort of thing. A boat race for your face or frog and toad for the road, you know? You can tell where I come from, can't you? Right, yeah, so um, she said that um, they wanted to extradite her from Australia. Police Scotland wanted to extradite her from um, Australia to, to Scotland to answer questions because she used the word sweaty sock on social media. I mean, God's sake, they are so humorless, aren't they? I mean, you've got people like Billy Connolly, of course, you know, who are great. But then you've got also these dreary, sort of like dreary Presbyterian Scots who are just like their own weather. They're dreary and dull and humorless and miserable and dull, dull. Yeah, that's what they are. And it's just like an absolute fucking nightmare, I suppose, you know. It's kind of like the Scottish version of the English Jobsworth, you know. Oh, you're not supposed to have any fun. They're, they're more like, a, oh, someone's having fun around here. We can't be having that. They're like that, aren't they? They're really, really dull. And that's the, the trouble. So, of course, these people will be thriving now because how dare anyone have any fun? <laughs> that's what it comes down to. So, I was actually thinking that if this law was to be applied retrospectively, God, you know what would happen, don't you? 
Everything that Billy Connolly has ever said would have him in prison. That's the first thing. Literally everything Billy Connolly ever said would have him banged up. So you'd go through all his stand-up routines and the Billy Connolly be gone, right? And then train spotting. This is one thing I would like to talk about is train spotting. There's a the sequel, T2 Train Spotting. I don't know if any of you saw it. I'm probably gonna spoil a bit of it if you do. They go into this redneck pub, this boozer full of um, real, was it, hardcore, like Rangers type uh, Protestants who are singing rebel songs about the Battle of Dordogne, right? Um, and uh, Renton and Sick Boy, um, they go in there, the main characters. I can't remember who plays Sick Boy, but Ewan McGregor, as you know, plays Renton. They go in there and they decide to improvise a song that they make up on the spot about there being no more Catholics left, right? Uh, but this is like a front, because um, what's really going on while they're distracting the audience is that they're stealing their credit and debit cards from their, uh, from their jackets. And then once they leave and they get out and they've got all their credit cards, um, they go to the ATM and they put in the PIN number. Now the reason why they're doing this, of course, is because the PIN number for most of the people who are in there was the year of the Battle of Dordogne. They make themselves a fortune, and then at midnight they reset and they start again and start raiding more money from their cash point, uh, from the cash points from their accounts, right? And I thought that well, was funny. But I suppose, right, that this would be considered to be quite inflammatory these days with this stupid joke bill that Scotland has got now. And as a result, it kind of means that, um, you know, uh, if they were going to reply that retrospectively, Danny Boyle would be in trouble, wouldn't he? I mean, Ewan McGregor, uh, see it, Ewan Bremner, Kelly MacDonald, oh, uh, what's the name now, the one now? I can't remember, and that's it. Robert Carlyle, how could I forget him? Yeah? And then Irvin Welsh, who wrote the original book, is probably the patient zero when it comes to stuff like this, because if it wasn't for him, the films wouldn't have been made, the franchise wouldn't exist, so they'd have to implicate him as well. So that's the trouble with all of this, is that, you know, Art has to become illegal now. Drama, comedy, everything like that. It's all going to demonstrate either that Scotland is a complete totalitarian nightmare and that everyone has to be investigated and literally everyone um, who says anything offensive and they don't even have to be in Scotland. I mean, I can be here in the Philippines and someone in Scotland can see my video and be offended by it. So, so many people in the whole world, the outspoken critics of this terrible law in the rest of the world, Right now, <laughs> God, I mean, I don't know. I think they're just bitter because they never had an empire of their own, really. And that's what it comes down to, really. <laughs> you know, probably, yeah. So it's great to see that in the space of just over a week, right, that uh, what has happened is they've been overwhelmed with a deluge and the biggest, by far, by a country mile complaints have been against Humza Useless himself. Right, <laughs> so that's the thing. And number two on that list was J.K. Rowling, because there's a lot of these spiteful activists out there who wish, as you know, to, um, they want J.K. Rowling banged up. Now, I want to add context to the J.K. Rowling situation. She, um, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but one of the reasons why she became a feminist in the first place was because she was in an abusive relationship and um, she was thrown out on the street in a pool of her own blood. Right? This was before Harry Potter, before she started writing, when she was not a billionaireess, when she was just a, a nobody. She had, um, she was, yeah, basically beaten till she was bleeding and thrown out onto the street by an abusive, violent ex. So she, I suppose, has got a reason to want to protect women from, um, you know, dubious legislation. Now, as for me, right, I'm a bloke. I'm not so vulnerable. I'm not, um, you know, in this the situation and uh, when it comes to trans people my attitude is treat them like individuals if there are some that are okay I mean uh, there's one who appears as a talking head on um, I think talk radio and GB news called Debbie Hayton and um, Debbie Hayton is of the opinion that um, she's not a real woman in the same way that a biological woman is and is against this law and is um, often against uh, trans activism because uh, as far as she, and I will be polite and use the right pronouns in this case, you know, because um, Debbie Hayton comes across as a good person. Um, the trans activists don't like her, so that's the thing, because she has the wrong opinions. They're not interested in protecting her because she's trans, they treat her like a Judas and a traitor. That's the thing. And then there's Blair White in America, who again looks quite 
convincingly female, you know, more so than any one of the other trans people I've ever seen. Of course, they don't like um, her either because she actually looks convincingly female, but at the same time, does not buy into the ideology at all. It's more sort of towards the political right, probably more pro-gun, probably more likely to vote a Republican, right? And they can't stand Blair White. And so, you know, this is the thing. So they're not into diversity of opinion. This is about oops, an ideology. And the problem, of course, with it being about an ideology is it's about the ideology itself. It's not about um, trans people, really. The trans people are just a reason for this ideology to exist. It's basically uh, a trip that a bunch of people want to lay on you with the whole trans thing attached to it as a shield, you know? And that's all it is. And enough people know that and understand that now. And as I say, if I meet people on an individual to individual basis, I ain't going to judge them by that. I'm not going to just automatically preconceive that just because they're trans that I must like them or dislike them. No, I have to get to know their individual personality to begin with because that's what it comes down to. I'm like that with everyone, you know? So that's how I feel about all of this. It's the activists and the lobbyists, the crazy people who do bad things. Now there's a group of women in Scotland called Women Won't Weesht. Now, weesht is Gaelic. I know this because my parents um, use the Irish version, which is wished. They say, ah, wished up, will you? They'd be like that, which basically means, uh, translates as women won't be silent, women won't be quiet, women won't shut up. And they are basically women who are um, lobbying against uh, women being in Olympic sports and women being at risk of that small minority of autogynophile pervy men who just identify as being the opposite gender um, for the sake of being able to play the system so they can go into women's changing rooms. They do exist, it's quite obvious, and people who play the system in that sort of way for nefarious and malevolent reasons should be seen for what they are. Now, of course, you know, I'm, I'm very kind like this. I wouldn't tar everyone with the same brush, but there is a significant number of these people out there, and there is evidence that they exist. And so, you know, if uh, I would say that if anyone wanted to help the real trans community who are the good guys in all of this, the first thing you would do is separate the wheat from the chaff. You've got to find these people and you've got to say, no, this can't be. <laughs> so, you know, it, and again, you know, sort of like when, uh, what's it, her name, Kelly J. Keane, who's also known as Posey Parker, has an organisation called we Let Women Speak. She goes to Scotland, meets and teams up with the Women Won't Weeshed girls. And um, what happens? There's a bunch of black block Antifa masks people who always intimidate them. And, and a lot of these people are blokes. I mean, they're, not, they're clearly not even trans. They're clearly men. And what they do is they just wear masks over their faces or they, or they put nail varnish on their fingers and put the pronoun she, her on their, on their sleeves but they're clearly not real trans people. They're playing the system as well, and they go there to intimidate them, right? Now, of course, I know these are all single issues, and I understand you know, that I'm coming from a more neutral um, perspective myself, but I can understand that this is a reaction to an action, and anyone can see this. And of course, women are not included in this legislation, and they're trying to make that out to be a good thing, because they want to bring in a new misogyny bill, that's going to be terrible because, I mean, you know, again, it's one rule for one lot and one lot, another, not, no rules for the other lot. So if they're going to bring in a, a misogyny bill, they must also bring in a misandry bill, should they not? I mean, it should work both ways. There should be a misogyny and misandry bill because that way um, you are being neutral. You're not being one-sided. And this bill is definitely, that we've got at the moment, the hate crime bill, is definitely very much one-sided. It, it very much creates a two-tier situation. And this, I think, is just absolutely unbelievably terrible. So, and also, this law as well um, has broken its own rules. Yeah, the, the law has broken itself in the way that the legislation was drafted because they pointed out that young white men, or, or you know, white boys and white men, are most likely to commit these crimes. Now, this is some kind of racial or demographic profiling that this is supposed to be against. So it kind of... Um, hoisted itself to its own petard 
by breaking its own rules, by discriminating against uh, a group of people, right? By age, by sex, it even says this in there. And it done it, it broke its own rules in the legislation itself, which makes the whole thing an absolute joke. And it's such a shame, man, because you know, Scotland is a very beautiful country. All right, weather um, is bad, the temperature is not often, you know, favorable to you. But if you go to Scotland and you go for a walk and you're prepared for it, it's a lovely place with loads of wide open spaces, you know. And in the summertime, the days are super long because of its northern latitude. You get up to about, what, 18 hours of daylight if you go there at summer solstice. Um, whether you see the sun or not, that's another thing. Um, you get, you'll get eaten to death by midges, but you can't get malaria or dengue up there, at least. You know? You'd just get bitten to pieces, though. That's one sort of thing. But the mountains, the valleys, the open spaces, the, it's huge, man. It's a really amazing place. I went walking up there once and, uh, wow, it really is. It's a different world from England in that way. England kind of looks a bit more miniature when you see it, right? Oh, got to turn around here. Got the beach directly behind me. Oh, look at that. Lovely white sand. I'm staying in the shade, though, myself, because the sun is extremely bright. And, um, you know, that's the trouble, but, you know, look at that, a eh? Picture postcard perfect, that, isn't it, eh? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't want to go back to the temperate world. Not ever if I can help it. <laughs> so, I hope, anyway, whatever the hell happens, that this is Scotland's um, poll tax moment. I'm hoping this is jumping the shark for woke tyranny. This is what I'm hoping more than anything else. And I'm hoping that enough sensible Scots can get together and say, right, enough of this, we ain't standing for it, that this law ends up either being repealed or shelved or ignored. Because I think that's what it will have to come to that. Because if it carries on like this, what will happen is that the police will be so inundated with complaints about her hurty words. It'd be like dealing with, um, I don't know, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a, 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 a woke, unfriendly phrase, right? But when I was a kid at school, uh, they used to call the kids that were geeks um, spanners and spasmos, right? <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, that's the phrase that they used back then. Now, this kind of meant that you weren't hard, you were weak, and you got pushed around, and you were easily bullied, and you were crying. But they've come to a point where it's very easy, if you played the victim too much, to become so pathetic that no one um, had any respect for you, not even the teachers that you were complaining to. Because they'd be, they'd be saying to you, you've got to harden up. You know, you can't just keep on letting this happen to you. And so, um, you know, you just become pathetic and weak and then you're kicked by everyone. But if the whole world ends up being run by a regime that puts the needs of those people above everyone else, then, and that, that becomes the basis of law enforcement, that is going to be an absolute disaster. And the Scots are not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be really hardcore people, you know? They're supposed to be the toughest, most leatheriest barbarians. I mean, the flipping Romans couldn't, couldn't come there, could they? No, they just uh, went for the Romans like a bunch of marauding barbarians. That's what they did, and that's the thing. So come on, find out in you, Scotland. Find your, your inner William Wallace's and footy it home and all that bollocks. You know, you've got to do it, you? Yeah. You can't have it be that you go up to someone and say, well, like your kilt, and they say to you, I identify as a female. This is not, not a kilt, that's a scarlet. And then they complain in a sex shop, you know, for instance. And, and then, uh, I don't know what they buy. They buy a hate monster themed dildo, right? Or alternatively, you go up to a bloke and say, I like your skirt, and you go, Donna ye misgender me, ya right? But of course, he can't complain because he's a bloke. So, and you can't complain that you've been headbutted because that's real violence. Uh, that's not just hurty words. So you see what I mean? Um, they, neither him or, or you will go to the sex shop to do the complaining then. But hey, I still think the novelty condom, hate monster condom would be a great idea. What do you reckon? <laughs> I reckon some company should start manufacturing them. You know, I think it'd be a great idea. Maybe I should patent it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, luckily enough, I'm halfway across the world and I hope I don't get extradited to sweaty land. Ooh, what did I just say? Oh, never mind. Right, so let's hope all you can do in a situation like this is laugh at them. Satire is a great weapon, right? Because enough people know 
that this is a terrible idea, this is a very bad law, it's a thin end of the worst voyage to happen to one of the two countries that brought the world the Enlightenment, the other one being France, you know, and also, you know, because Scotland is next to England, the country that brought people, the Magna Carta, this is highly inappropriate for this to happen. You know, Scotland and England and Ireland, with their, you know, how can I say, with the Magna Carta, with the Enlightenment era, with the, the kind of the, the Celtic rebel spirit that was all about um, freeing ourselves from the crown and all of that, all of these things led to the creation of the United States, a country that was born out of revolution. So, you know, there's so many reasons to, for this to be overthrown. It has to be overthrown. Scotland, you've got the worst cacistocracy you could ever wish for, you know it, you've got to do something about it, you know? And, uh, well, I don't know. In the meantime, um, you know what? I've got to tell you something. I've got to just go on the beach. I feel a pun coming on, right? Um, I decided that this beach that I'm on in the Philippines, right, is, uh, this, this beach is racist, do you know why? Because the sand is white. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist that. You know, I think that's just going to be something I'm going to have to keep doing every now and then, just for a laugh. Right, I'm finishing off on the beach. I'm going to make my way somewhere else now. Thought I'd just give you a bit of that. Isn't it nice, man? Honestly, you know, I don't understand why more and more people don't live in the tropics. I mean, Scotland might be a country to be proud of, but fuck, no, I prefer this climate. That would do much better. Right, my eyes hurting though. Right, I'll leave it at that then. See you later, alligator. See you soon. Baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, check out all our social media links. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.